Uh, my name is John Strotbeck. I am the founder and CEO of Boathouse Sports. I'm also a six-time uh, U.S. Rowing National Team member. Uh, raced in two Olympics, the 1984 and 1988 Olympics. I raced in the World Championships in between and the Pan Am Games in between and in Italy and other places worldwide. I started Boathouse Sports in, in 1985. This is the first catalog and this catalog was done by me uh, in a typeset machine because we didn't have computers or not very many and most of the drawings are done by my hand. My mother gave me some uh, artistic skill. Um, I showed up in Philadelphia after three years after graduation from college and I started rowing again and I asked people where can I find rowing clothes and people said in the, in the, in, in, in the office upstairs and I said no 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 that's not what I mean. If I want to buy a pair of rowing trowel or a shirt for myself where can I buy one and everybody shrugged their shoulders. Well the reality was there was no place to buy rowing clothes. There was only a few companies that sold it in bulk and bulk meant 72 pieces. So I created this catalog and uh, in 19, May of 1985 took it to the Dad Vales and the Eastern Sprints and, uh, and stood at the point where I saw the most uh, people walking by and literally handed out the catalog and within oh I don't know maybe a week or two weeks realized that I found a niche and that niche was uh, rowing enthusiasts uh, looking for anything that had to do with rowing. The business built from 1985 to 1988 exclusively as a rowing company and we sold everything except for boats and oars. Rowing shorts, jerseys, socks, uh, deck sandals, oar covers, pogies, jackets, anything and everything that a rower needed other than again boats or oars. Um, advance 20 some years in 2009 uh, we signed a deal with U.S. Rowing to be the official sponsor, official partner of the U.S. Rowing national teams and the Olympic teams. And today, um, our rowing business is, is growing phenomenally, along with the sport. Uh, we supply to the national teams uh, all their racing gear, all their training gear, uh, the vast portion of their casual gear, all their outerwear, um, to both the athletes and the coaches, but also to the parents and the enthusiasts. Um, uh, we uh, signed the deal in 2009, we outfitted the team in the 2012 Olympics, uh, we will outfit the team in 2016 in Rio, and we hope that we're still here uh, 2020 in Tokyo. Um, we're committed to the sport, Have uh, the company name is Boathouse Sports, we were born out of the sport of rowing, we do sell to a lot of other sports, but rowing is still near and dear our heart, and uh, this is among other things a way for us to give back. Uh, the history of the Unisuit from my perspective, in, um, I was on the national team again from 83 to 88. In 1985 we were racing in Hazevenkel, Belgium, and I believe uh, it was the first time I had seen a Unisuit being worn by the Italian team. Uh, at all the world championships or Olympics or the big events there's a big trading, a lot of trading going on at the end of the events and I traded somebody for a Unisuit and we brought it back here and started to tinker with it and uh, in the end uh, made ourselves some uni suits uh, and offered them to teams nationwide. We only got three orders in 1986. Um, Vesper Boat Club, Harvard University, and the Naval Academy. At Vesper we wore them, I remember wearing them, and uh, uh, Harvard University and the Naval Academy, the schools would not allow the athletes to wear them because they said they were too risque. And to the best of my knowledge, a lot of those athletes still wore their uni suits, but they pulled their trowel and their, their traditional garment over it. Um, that year, 1986, was the first year the national team wore uni suits, and it was a very, it was a lightweight lycra. It was a little bit, um, I, I think that everybody liked the uni suits, but uh, they were not nearly as technical or as uh, well fitting or as comfortable as they are today. Um, I think back then we were designing them mostly around a bicycle um, racing suit, similar, um, but had not uh, developed the uni suit that much by that point. In 2009, we sort of reintroduced the new uni suits, and uh, and we continue to evolve the uni suits today. We have uh, some brand new fabrics we're coming out with this summer that are going to be a lot more comfortable give a little more weight and there's a couple uh, technological advantages that we're going to introduce that are um, 
wear, we'll call it wearable technology at this stage. I can't really tell you what it is, but we're working on it with Philadelphia University, who's one of the biggest textile schools in the country and happens to be about four miles down the road. So we do a lot of product development with Philly, Philadelphia University. And I'll give you a little hint. It's going to be one of three things. Um, one is a frictionless fabric, and where, whereas rowing, there isn't that much wind friction, there is some. So it might be an advantage. The other is a fabric that will identify the hydration level of an athlete and whether or not they're dehydrated and if they need to drink. And the other one, which I like the best, is uh, it will monitor and uh, send a message to each rower uh, via an LED light that whether or not you're in sync with the rower in front of you. Uh, essentially measuring the distance between the chest and the back of the, of the athlete in front of you. That one might be the, that one's the coolest, I think. Um, uh, but maybe the longest out. The first two are fairly easy.